welcome back to Outside Xbox, and this week we're talking about Bioshock Infinite uh, because of the new Burial at Sea Episode 2 trailer. There are a lot of uh, questions raised, so we've been on the internet looking at the various fan theories about what to expect from Burial at Sea Episode 2. We're going to present some of those theories and work through which ones we think are plausible and which ones we think are crazy fantasy. All right, so theory the first. <laughs> Elizabeth will end up being responsible for the fall of Rapture. Everything we see in Bioshock 1, that's all caused by the actions of Elizabeth in the second part of Burial at Sea. What do you reckon? That's Atlas in Atlas the slash trailer. Fontaine. What's the hold up? Just having a bit of a laugh, Atlas. And we Primary know antagonist. how the fall of Rapture begins, right? Right. Atlas's men, they storm the Kashmir restaurant in Rapture on New Year's Eve. Big fight breaks out, that's the start of the Civil War in Rapture. So the fact that Alice is there, the fact that it's New Year's Eve, I think this is pretty much certain what's gonna happen. Elizabeth's gonna get them back to Rapture. That's what he asked her to do in the trailer. I can get you back to Rapture. And how you plan on doing that, sister? Everything's gonna break out and that's that's what we're gonna actually see happen in the DLC. So yeah, pretty positive. Unless it's a curveball from Ken Levine. True, I mean that guy and his curveballs. <laughs> So is the Elizabeth of this universe, whatever that means. Sally, the little girl that you're trying to find throughout episode one of Barry. Yeah, the one that you stick in the heat right, duct, right? who turns out to be a little sister, is another version of Elizabeth from a different dimension. Um, I don't really buy this as a theory. Seems my instincts were correct. Where's Sally? I don't know, but I know someone who does. I, right. think, I think the reason people are thinking it is because Elizabeth is very keen to find Sally. Uh, and we don't really get a reason why. And also Booker has a kind of a parental uh, attachment to her. He's not her actual father. She's an orphan that he sort of takes in and looks after, looks after in the way that Booker looks after all of his daughters. <laughs> not very well at all. <laughs> not very well. I think the thing here is not nothing as literal as this is Elizabeth, mm. but it's like a psychological stand-in for Elizabeth. And that's why Booker uh, has this attachment to her. And that's why Elizabeth is, is using the little girl to torture Booker slash Comstock. Um, so you reckon I that this theory? I don't buy this as a theory okay. Eh. And this concerns the ghostly Booker who appears in the trailer for Burial. Let's see episode two. Tell him you can get him back. Booker. So you're playing as Elizabeth. That's the point of Burial. Let's see episode two. Yeah. And Booker now appears to you, or at least does in the trailer, as a kind of ghostly presence that right. only Elizabeth can see. This theory is Booker and Elizabeth have sort of traded places and now Booker becomes a kind of quantum magical right. being and Elizabeth is, is more the Booker of this episode. Booker is going to be the one who can manipulate dimensions and Elizabeth doesn't have that power anymore, I think okay. is the gist of this theory. Suchar. What? Tell him Suchar. Suchar. What's, what's interesting about this theory is the speculation over whether the ghost Booker is Booker Prime, so to speak, as in the Booker that you play in Bioshock Infinite. Booker's got, obviously, a guitar now. But if I do this, the girl goes with me. Little sisters are worth their weight in gold. She's not up for negotiation. Maybe it's a reference to the moment in the game where he plays the guitar with Elizabeth. It's a, it's a little kind of bonding moment for the characters. Yeah, yeah. And so it's meaningful. It identifies him as the Booker from Bioshock Infinite. But that still doesn't explain how he's able to project himself through space and time now. A wizard did it. Booker is now like the Lutess twins in that he exists across all dimensions and so he's able to appear to Elizabeth like that. But I th were the Lutesses only invisible visible? to other people? Actually, I don't think you ever saw them interacting with anyone else, did you? They could appear to different people. There's a voxophone you find when someone talks about having seen the Lutesses That's after true. they've been murdered. That's true, but in a ghostly apparition sort of way. Yeah. You're his lab assistant. I'm his lab assistant. I, th I think it's possible. I mean, it's... The book has adopted a Lutesse-like role where he exists across all universes and timelines for some reason now, and in that way he's going to help Elizabeth out in episode two. Okay, so the next theory... If you remember from the original Bioshock, uh, Atlas uh, was a kind of a revolutionary figure. That's a right fairy tale you've dreamed up, sister. The theory here is that Atlas and Fontaine aren't the same person, so the Atlas that you see in the trailer, right. something's going to happen in Burial at Sea 2 
where we will maybe get another character pulled through from another dimension who will take over the role of Atlas and become Fontaine, which explains the kind of the change in personality between Atlas and Fontaine, the change in looks okay. between Atlas and Fontaine. I mean, it was explained in the first game as plastic surgery to mm -hmm. make it look different. Atlas and Fontaine not being the same guy after all yes. would be that double reversal curveball. Because that's sort of not ingrained, impossible. ingrained in the lore. That yeah, Atlas exactly. And the if same you're thing. going to really blow someone's mind, then you have to not link up those two stories, but in fact reveal that mm. it was something it was wrong all along. All along. Yeah. Tell them. Atlas says he hasn't forgotten them. I mean, another theory that's been put forward is that Booker is actually Fontaine. Maybe with ideas to create a better Rapture and he gets corrupted by power as he does when he's Comstock. Okay, so this is his, like, megalomania, must control everything and create a perfect city yeah. coming out again. Again. I think it would be it would be neat to have something like that that changes the way you view the original game. Um, and I, I definitely think there will be something like that because I don't think Ken Levine could pass up that opportunity. <laughs> but then, I mean, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big one. We're closed. And, and it would mean you kill Booker at the end of Bioshock. It would make Bi Booker the final boss of the original Bioshock. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough evidence to support it, and I think it would be incredibly complicated to pull off. Brace yourself. Right, embraced. Booker is Andrew Ryan. Bullshit. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense from a story point of view. No. Um, it's just, just another theory where you're like, this character is really... Yeah, like you just, this what other, other characters character. are there that he could be? It's right. like, that's the kind of the Bioshock trope now. Someone is someone else. Someone <laughs> is someone's true. son. I mean, Andrew Ryan is is there in, in Burial at Sea, yes. as is that comes. I mean, how many, how many bookers can one universe sustain <laughs> at any one point? Uh, I think, no, no way. Okay. Obviously, Elizabeth is on her trans-dimensional killing spree. Um, killing all possible Comstocks. Yeah. Uh, I think the idea was that maybe that was the final remaining Comstock. Okay. So with him out of the picture, there are no more existing Comstocks and somehow that's affected Elizabeth in some way. Maybe that's caused her to lose her transdimensional quantum superpowers. Okay. So possibly in this instalment of the game, you won't be able to use tears as Elizabeth. Maybe. Mm. Maybe. Elizabeth ends up becoming Bridget Tenenbaum. Again, it's people going, here's a female character that someone could be. So she's the female scientist from Bioshock 1 who mm -hmm. discovers the properties of Adam and creates the Four Sisters. Okay. And she uh, helps you out over the intercom. She's sort of set in opposition to Atlas. Elizabeth, Elizabeth ends, ends up, up becoming Sophia a big Lamb. daddy. You never see who's in the big daddy suit. God, it was Elizabeth all along. There you go. You heard it here first. The end of Burial at Sea is a big daddy taking its helmet off <laughs> and then it's Elizabeth's face underneath. Oh, and she's all messed up like Darth Vader. So it's a nice that one. Okay, final theory. Guy in the trailer who punches out Elizabeth at the end <laughs> is Sultan Stall, the politician from Bioshock Infinite, who you saw in the early trailer of the game that was then cut from the final version. And the evidence for this? Is he's got the same facial hair. Yeah, yeah definitely so on that one. Definitely Sultan Watch for Stall. that. So, no, no, literally it's just got similar Oh yeah, he's got, he's got the same like uh, mutton chop whiskers thing. Okay, going. what would it even mean if like a politician had chased Elizabeth from Columbia, it would become one of Atlas's cronies in a prison under the sea? But mutton chop facial whiskers, very popular in the 1890s, not so much in the 1950s. So what's he doing with that Ooh. facial hair in the 1950s? Mystery. 90 slash right. 1960s. That's the, that's the real question. Okay, well that's a terrible Infinite. theory and I disagree. So those were some theories about Bioshock Infinite Baronetcy episode two. Uh, what do you think? Any of those sound plausible to you? Let us know in the comments below and we will see you next time on Outside Xbox.